All right, guys, today we're looking at Newton's method, and Newton's method is given as follows, and we use Newton's method to find the approx or to approximate zeros of functions and where they potentially intersect. So this particular problem, we've got this function y equals x squared minus 2. We're asked to approximate the positive zero. So this one's got actually two zeros, which kind of makes sense from the fundamental theorem of algebra. And so we're going to actually do this. We're going to take a guess. Now, I'm just going to show you kind of roughly what this graph looks like. So if this is uh, the y-axis and this is the x-axis, the graph of the curve actually looks something like this. Okay? It's a parabola, big, not a big surprise there. And since this has the positive zero, so I want to approximate this guy here. Now, I have a little prior knowledge about this problem, so I'm going to just say that my initial guess is going to be 1. So I use the notation x sub naught or x zero. That's the initial guess. So this is my initial guess. Okay, so now that I've got my initial guess, which I hope is pretty close to the right answer, but not quite right, I'm now going to try to figure out what x sub one is. Well, how do we find x sub one? Well, according to our formula, we're going to use, if this is x sub n plus one, what's n in this case? Well, n is going to be 0, because 0 plus 1 is 1. So I need to do x sub 0 minus f of x sub 0 divided by f prime of x sub 0. This is what I need to do, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now using, oh, and I need to know the derivative, so I'll get to that in just a second. So what is x sub naught? Well, that was 1. We've already established that that's 1. Minus, now I've got to do f of 1 over f prime of 1. Now, I, I kind of forgot to mention, this is our curve. y prime is clearly 2x, so that's a nice, easy derivative. So now let's go back down here and kind of finish out our work. So that's going to be 1 minus, now I've got to find f of 1. So if I plug 1 into our function... Uh, let's see here. What would that be? I think that'd be, I think it's negative one. And then if I do F prime of one, if I plug one into Y prime, I think that'd be two. So I think that turns out to give us an answer of one and one half. So X sub one is one and a half. So hopefully, whatever the answer is, hopefully this answer is closer than our initial guess was. So far, so good, guys? Does that make sense? Now, is that the exact answer? Well, the answer is no. I mean, if you take 3 halves squared, or 3 over 2 squared, what would that be? That would be 9 over 4, right? What's 9 over 4 minus 2? That would be a fourth, right? So that's not zero, right? Okay, so how do I get a better, more accurate answer? I got to do it again. So this is what we call an iterative process. So it means you keep doing it. So let's do it again. So x sub 2. Well, to get x sub 2, i got to do the previous one. So that's x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 over f prime of x sub 1. Okay, well, what was x sub 1? Well, it's 1 and 1 half. So let's see here if I can do something fancy if this will let me. Nope, that's not going to let me do that, so I won't do anything fancy. I'm just going to do it the hard way. Uh, I'm going to write one and one half. Ooh, that's too big. Get rid of that. One and one half minus f of one and one half over f prime of one and one half. Now, at this point, I'm going to use my calculator to help me get this answer. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here so I can do that. Okay, so now I've used my calculator to give me this answer. And I went ahead and converted it to a fraction. And you'll get 1 and 5 twelfths, which is 1.416666 repeating. Now, I claim that that answer is even better than the previous one. 
Let's go ahead and play the game one more time. I'm going to do this one with my calculator right here. So I'm going to do, uh, let's see here. When I did it this, this third time, I'm going to show a little bit of work here. To get x sub 3, I'm going to do x sub 2 minus f of x sub 2 over f prime of x sub 2, which is going to give me the following. It's going to give me this 1 and 5 twelfths minus f of, running out of room, 1 and 5 twelfths over f prime of 1 and 5 twelfths. And this turns out to be 577 over 408, or approximately 1.414215, etc. Which is even better than the previous one. And guess what I can keep doing? I can keep iterating this. I can keep repeating this process. And guess what happens each time I repeat the process? The answer gets better and better and better. Does anyone want to take a stab? Does anybody think they know what number that is? 1.414. Does that number sound familiar to anybody? It is the square root of? It is the square root of 2. So as this goes on and on, you get the square root of 2. Now, if you put the square root of 2 in here, um, you'll see that it is not exactly this decimal. In fact, you guys all know that the square root of 2 is an irrational number, right? And since it's irrational, that means it does not repeat and it does not terminate. So guess how long technically you'd have to do this to get the exact answer forever. forever. We're not going to do it forever. The good news is, is that this is a very efficient method. OK, so the answer here is the square root of two. And if you go back to the problem, it, it, it kind of should have made sense, right? The square of what number minus two is equal to zero. The square of what number minus two equals zero. <laughs> The square root of 2, duh. Right? Doesn't that make sense? Now, keep in mind, not only does the square root of 2 work, but also the negative square root of 2. Okay? This is called Newton's method. Now, um, does anyone... I'm going to pause here. One of you asked earlier today, hey, can I use my calculator to help me make my initial guess? Can I look... Yes. Because here's the thing. On, on these problems... On almost every Newton method problem that you're given, guess what you're going to need to do the problem? Your calculator. Because it gets really hard calculating these fractions. So we're kind of cheating because what we could have done, I mean, hopefully we all know this, I could have just graphed this function on my graphing calculator and used the zero feature to figure out the zero, right? So you're like, why are we doing this? Well, here's the thing. you got to keep in mind that 400 years ago, when, when they discovered this, Newton, for example, they didn't have calculators. They didn't have computers. In fact, computers have only been around my, in my lifetime, basically. Personal computers were developed in 1971, which was the year I was born. So how would they, how would, how, by the way, guess how your calculator actually finds zeros? It has an algorithm that does this. This is actually how it does it, Okay. So, I, so does that answer that question? Um, now, I want to talk about a couple of pitfalls that can happen. Okay, so I'm going to go to a new slide. So here is the pitfall. Here's pitfall number one. So let's say you've got some function f of x equals whatever it equals, and then you make your first guess, which is let's say one again. You do your calculation, and then you get x sub one is let's just say negative a half. 
And then you do it again and you get x sub 2 and then this time it's 3. And then you do x sub 3 and then this time you get uh, negative 7. Do you just keep going? No. What do you notice is happening as we went from here to here to here? What is happening to the answer? By the way, you can think of this, if you will, as kind of the y value. What is happening to the y value of the function? And I know we're actually talking about the x-intercepts, but what's happening to these y values as we go down? They're what? They're, they're the same? Oh, they're zigzagging. Okay, good. Here's, here's the other thing. Let me, let me kind of point this out a little bit more over here. This number was, this, this initial guess was 1, right? This was our initial guess. This one here was 1.5. Agreed? This was 1.416666. This one is 1.414. What's happening to these numbers as we go down, as we go down the process? We are approaching this magical number called the square root of 2, correct? Mm -hmm. What's going on over here, though? We're not approaching. We're not approaching anything. In fact, we are, we are what we call diverging. We're not getting closer to the answer. We're getting further away. So here's the big thing I need to warn you about. This method does not always work. If you looked at the book, if you looked at the notes, or if you watched my video, I've made some comments about that. If the series or if the function does not converge in a certain way, this, this will not work. And the best way for you to recognize that is when you start making these guesses, if the numbers start getting further and further and further away instead of getting closer and closer and closer, don't keep going. Now, let's say that happens. And by the way, it can actually happen on a function that's differentiable. Let's say that it gets worse. What could you do? Because you know it's not a trick question. You've been told to use Newton's method, but whatever for whatever reason, your numbers, what could you do to maybe write the ship? Start from something else. That's the key. Now, I'm just telling you that in this case, we started at one. We just made the initial guess of one. Maybe, and, and I'm just saying, maybe the student was just not like you ever had a brain fart. Maybe the student had a brain fart and it actually crossed over at um, it close to negative one and they accidentally just did one. Okay, does that make sense? So if this doesn't work, then maybe try a better guess. And, and you might look back and go, yeah, that wasn't very smart. That wasn't a very good guess and try it that way. Okay. Now I'm just going to let you know, my goal in this class is not to like give you one that doesn't work, but I do need to let you know that there are sometimes it will not work. And in order for you to use Newton's method, in fact, let's go back to this real quick. Does the function have to be continuous for you to use it? Yes. Yeah. Does it have to be differentiable? Yes. By the way, why does it have to be differentiable? Because you need the derivative, Mr. Allen. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, guess what the derivative can't be? Guess what this can't equal? Sin no, since it's on the bottom. Oh, yeah. So this is another potential. So there are some potential pitfalls. Again, my goal isn't to give those to you. I'm just forewarning you that, you know, I feel like sometimes in math we just say, yeah, you can do this whenever you want. It always works. Well, it almost always works. But there are situations where Newton's method does not work. Okay.